Welcome to Caucus Post. We here with my man, Military James. What's going on, Bobby? Man, I'm gonna tell you once again, boy, it's hot as a mug here in Tampa, Florida, ain't it? Fish grease. Fish grease. Well, I'm gonna tell you, fish grease, I get ready to say a grease. <laughs> it's pretty hot today. Pretty yeah, hot. man. Just, well, you know, we in Tampa, Florida, and man, we sitting here, and, man, we got a crazy conversation we wanna talk about today. Man, we were out here talking about the state of wrestling. Mm. Now tell me, where wrestling pretty much started? started from? Well, it depends on who you ask, but if you ask, you know, some folks in the Sunshine State, they'll tell you it started in Lakeland. Gordon Soli. You know Gordon Soli. Gordon Soli. Gordon Soli. It started in Lakeland. How did he end it? How was, what was that phrase you used to say? Coming from the Sunshine State, something yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was it? What was it? Coming live from the Sunshine State. And he was, remember, he used to always have it at the uh, National Guard Armories. Every army in Florida, you can get Every army in Florida, you can catch one. So tell me, who were some of your most favorable guys mm. from back in the 70s, 80s? Well, you just a smidge older than me. A little bit. So, um, oh man. If I like the Randy Macho Man Savage. Yeah, he's a little later. Yeah. Um, I like Devon Eriks. They, well, you know, the tragic, tragic family. Uh, but that claw, that claw was a uh, really what's nice. What's wrong with the, all the Devon Eriks family? Man, what's wrong with that? Everybody going to sell for Kevin. Man, oh, you think of they, selling the jeans? You know what? I don't know. That, that's tough because, you know, one killed yourself, one killed in a car accident. You know, it was just, it was just a tragedy. You know, they were supposed to be like wrestling royalty at some point. Cause you know, we didn't have a bunch of families in wrestling. They was really one of the big, most popular ones. And everybody gone. Everybody but Kevin. And he's living a isolated life back home in Hawaii. Believe it or not. Okay. So. Okay, out of the non Eric's, uh, let's take the father out of it. Okay, take the father out. With all the so-called Kids and uh, most of them were no king, you know that, right? Right, 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 right. Okay. Well, and, it's uh, only three brothers. Yeah, the rest of them was cousins. Okay, the max is there. Which one you think was the best? Well, no, no, they had the best run. They had the best run. People will say Kerry because he just had that that build, but I think Kevin was probably the most technology, you no know, technical wrestler there was out of the three. Kevin was no more than about five, eight, five, seven. Nah, nah, Kevin was taller than that. Man, who you talking about? The, you talking about the, the youngest brother? Man, who back are you gonna jump on? So you think Kerry was better? Man, I think Kerry had a, a better run because we wouldn't know about Kerry if if he didn't make it down the floor. This is true, and then he ended up winning uh, what was it heavyweight championship? Yeah, uh, uh, championship. Yeah, yeah. yeah yeah so yeah but i think he had a short run the heavyweight champion yeah real short run about a year and then he was done uh but i still think that uh kevin lasted longer he lasted longer in the business he had a much longer run uh but it, the toll took uh it took his toll on him uh when he lost both his brothers and then you know his cousins uh then his father subsequently after that you know it's hard to recover from that you right. know it's hard it's hard you know Recover from that many losses in that short a period of time, and then still be effective in the ring. Right. So, who do you think, coming from the Tampa Bay area, one of the best household names you think coming from the Hulk Hogan? Audience, if I had me a penalty flag or a paper <laughs> towel or a napkin, I would say pin it on the plate. Who you gonna pick? The American Dream, Dusty Rhodes. <laughs> Dusty made his chops behind the scenes. He kept wrestling going. He really did. Uh, a lot of the business side, maybe that side, the contract side that most of us never see. Dusty was that was that dude. I get that, but I don't want to hear that. 
what I'm saying is just far back. Mm -hmm. Just to go ahead and your grandma get up and say, catch him with that elbow. Hold up, hold up. So if you're in a bar fight, a bar fight, correct? Who, what wrestling you want on your side in that bar fight? You're going to pick one. I'm going to tell you this here. For the comical side of that bar fight, I want Dusty Rose coming off the damn top of the table. Catch somebody with an elbow. Folks, how many of y'all seen him shoot that elbow? It's slow. <laughs> but you turn around and say, Hulk Hogan, tell me this here. A leg drop. Man, that leg drop. That's man. the weakest move. Man, my grandmother elbow. can do a darn leg drop. Weakest move. That, how, can, how can that be a finishing move? Now, the binding elbow was. What, what, Dust Rose didn't have a finishing move. He what? just used the elbow and then he laid his fat summer going. Let me tell you this here. Hogan had that pretty tan. He, you know, he said he had them pipe on, uh, but I know some darn dudes had all much bigger. You know, uh, but 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 you know, uh, one of my favorites back then was Rocky Johnson. Yeah, Rocky was nice. Rocky was nice. But you know, that, that whole family was nice. Cause you know, they, they, they got a really, really uh, diverse family. Cause you know, uh, the small. Rikishi, yeah, the Rakians, the yeah. small SWAT team, yeah. they were all related to The Rock and of course to his father and right. grandfather. So that's pretty interesting. I think, uh, what was the other kid? Uh, I think Snooker was part of them too. Superfly Jimmy Snooker. Well, what do you think about Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. I like some Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. I like Ricky the Dragon. But here's the problem. I thought he was underrated. And there were so many other wrestlers that were so hyped up. They was really garbage. I mean, they really wasn't that good. Like, I'm going to just throw this out there. You probably going to disagree. A group that was overrated, wasn't that good, was the Freebirds. Bam, what, bam, boy. The Freebirds was Bam, not bam, boy. Okay, I'm going to say this again. Read my list. Freebirds were not that good. Can I give you something else? I'm going to say, let's say you're a young talk. And you're in the playground cutting the food, messing with some older gentleman you're supposed to be messing with. Then they say, I'm going to call my big brother. But that went bam, bam, come in. I'm not impressed. Okay, I'll give you that one, you know. Because, because you got to think about it. You think the Freebirds stack up against the Road Warriors? Okay. What about oh, them? Oh, okay. Man. What about Killer Call Cock? Okay, you dig it in the crates. He was nice. Ox Baker. Ox was a, now, nah, Ox was the first mean SOB that was in wrestling. He really was, he was a tough. Was he mean for real? I think I think that's just who he was. I never met the man, so I couldn't tell you. But just from what I've seen on television, he was rough. Do you remember when wrestling came on? Seven o'clock. On what day? Saturday. What's up? Oh man, I W T O G double four. So it's forty four. Forty four. And you know what was so funny? We took my in Tampa, Florida. Yeah, Tampa, Florida, of course. Uh, what was so funny is that we used to be able to see all of these wrestlers everywhere around here. And we Correct. did it. It's so crazy. You know, it's going to go back to what we were seeing uh, a while ago. We were spoiled here in Tampa. Okay, okay. Well, 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 well about you say that, what about Jack Briscoe? The Briscoe was a little tough. Family. Now, that was a good family. Yeah, that was a good family. But I think they didn't have a deep enough run. And maybe the politics of wrestling kind of kept them out of it. I like the Steiners. I thought they had a good run, but you know, it seemed like every one of these these power families they get together. They somebody get either get caught in drugs. You know, we hear this rumor about the steroids and these things, and and then what they just lose it. Eddie Graham. Ooh, that's royalty. That that's royalty. Yeah, that, 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 that's royalty. I, I, I get, it, you can't say no bad about Eddie Graham. You cannot. Yeah, but, yeah, but his finishing, his finishing move was that darn right hand. That was kind of corny. 
kind of funny. What's the best finishing move you've seen? We will we'll take it back to our generation. And because we know there ain't no such thing as new wrestling moves, it's just new names. Man, you ready? Yeah, what's your what's the one that you just love to see? You ready? Yeah. You ready? Mm-hmm. Hold on, man. Look, let me put this cigar out for a minute. Y'all super, super, super fly. Jimmy Jimmy Snook. Jumping off the dirt. The flag, the far flag. The first, the first what? version. Exactly. Good. Now, he was, no, he was one of the first ones to climb from that top rail That rope. there, that there was very impressive. Yeah. But I want to get another guy before we, you know, before you give me your sweet brown shirt. Ooh. I love everybody that can get up in the air. <laughs> I love a nerd. I love a guy that can fly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that. Wow. I ain't heard that name in a hot minute. Yeah, that was a good one now. You know, I, I, you know the direction of move that I thought that was one of the quintessential finishing moves when we were growing up was our sleeper hole. Everybody done put their cousin, their little brother, even their little sister in the sleeper hole. <laughs> in well, that figure four. <laughs> well, let me tell you this. You know, because my brother watched this. My brother used to do the figure four relative. Everybody come over and spend the night. They get the figure four. Figure four, spin it to a He done messed it up some Not the, not the he spin it up, He messed it up some <laughs> You over the weekend. You got a toy ACL. <laughs> hey, he messing these up over the weekend. Oh, my Remember my daddy tore my hat up over that spinning toe hole, boy. <laughs> now, that's funny. Now, that may be one of the only finishing moves. Which brother? The oldest brother that really hurt. That spinning toe hole hurt for real. <laughs> did, he, did, he, did he get you? Oh, of course. Shit, he had to fight himself on somebody. <laughs> Oh, when the youngest brother always, hey, I guarantee you he won't try that out. I don't know. But tell you something. The great. Not Terry Funk. Dory. No, it could have been Terry Funk's sake. A good big man could beat a good little man. It was, it was, it, yes, it was. He was the one that said that. And that ain't no lie. A good big bag could be the good little man in the day. I, I will agree. If you have the same intangible, I will agree up until a point. We ain't talking about you going to the car. No, no, no. In the ring, I would agree up until 10 minutes. Okay. After did 10 minutes, see, big man. Did you see? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Did you see that Riddick Bow when, when he tried to get out of it? Boxing it and uh, go over there to Taiwan and and uh, you know he was a good big man. What he do? That what? little man chopped that tree down. <laughs> oh my God! Really talk about that, man. Love you, Rick. I swear I love you, but <laughs> man, that was that was what that's what we talk about when if you a really big guy, yeah, they going after your legs, right? Because once they chop the leg, you the same size. What about? You know, a few years ago, you know, we, you know, I'm not going to call it a name, but, you know, we had a, a, a professional boxer, mm -hmm. ex-world champion, you know, mm -hmm. very known. And, um, you know, we had a, a, a pro football player, you know, very known in the local area. You know, he, you know, he played some line, you know, a big 6'5", 6'6", 360 pounds. You know, he still going to say, I ain't good with these. Well, but I put these hands around you, boy, I'm going to drive block you through all these walls. He going to do what? Drive block. <laughs> drive block. Nah, I think he a lot. He going to tell all the sheep rock all eight. <laughs> it wouldn't be no wall. You know, you only going to go through so many of that sheep rock for that concrete show up. Yeah, but when you <laughs> hit that concrete, <laughs> it's over. It's over. <laughs> I, I don't know. What possessed him to say that? It may have been in the group setting that he was in. Yeah. That statement. Because yes. the reality of it is, 
more than likely, it would have took a lot more for that much, much larger gentleman to actually, you know, put the paws on it. So, with that. I don't know what time frame and, you know, what century you from, but them guys were ready. Well, ready means that you about to do it. I think right there, they was, they was kind of in the, the negotiation stage. <laughs> yes. So, so, uh, you know, you know, I love me some ox bacon, the heart punch. Now, you know somebody else revolutionized that heart punch. Man, we ain't talking about back in the 50s, man. No, 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 they brought it back. It's young, he not young, but the other guy, he came out, his name was Mean Mark, and his signature was the heart punch. That's y'all Undertaker for y'all young folks out there. Well, remember he came out with that. Remember he was with the Twin Towers. Yeah. So, do you? How do you feel about Steam? I love some Steam. I love some Steam. Steam. He was one of the. Now this is for WCW. So he was the fan favorite. All the kids were running around with the with the Steam face paint on, and then. Somewhere along the line, he got wronged by management. He ended up getting hurt. And he took a whole year and started this uh, crow thing. Remember, I was like, I got the crow up in the rafters, hanging around, you know, like the, the cheap seats, yeah. always dressed in black. Yeah, he yeah, took that from Brandon Lee, didn't he? Yeah, 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 from Brandon Lee, the crow. And then he started carrying a baseball bat, like he was going to, you know, hit my the bat. It was just kind of crazy. I didn't like that. Um... And ultimately, he morphed into that that persona. Mm -hmm. uh, I really like the the other steam. You know, he had the Stinger Splash, and now he had that uh, Scorpion, which is really uh, who else did that move in WWE or WWF? It was a uh, uh, Hitman Hawk. Yeah, the Hitman. What what did he call it? Uh, Sharpshooter. Yeah, Sharpshooter. Sharpshooter. Yeah, so that was the same movie. That was like uh, Indian Deathlock too, right? Yeah, the Indian Deathlock. Yeah, so we've had, like I said, there are no new moves. All these moves just, yeah. there's probably like 15, 20 moves total, uh, and they just keep repackaging them. Well, you know, I got another name I want to throw out there, but, you know, you know, I mentioned his name a while ago. Terry Funk was probably the most trash talker. When they come to you couldn't understand a word he said. <laughs> uh, but you know, they were, they remember back then, they were playing in all those bloody matches. You know, Terry Funk. Man, I wasn't cutting Terry my go here for no hundred dollars. Oh my goodness. If you seen them um, like 15 years post ring appearance, their forehead was just took completely this last you know, What do you think about? Uh, when, when they had invaded WCW. Oh, oh, so you talk. Kevin Nash. Kevin Nash. Razor Ramon. Well, he what, what, what did he go by the end? Uh, he didn't go by Razor Ramon. He no, by, he went uh, by his real name. Uh, oh, my goodness. I forgot. I forgot. Yeah, it's yeah, been, yeah. It's been, it's been so long. Holly, Hulk Hogan. Hollywood Hogan. Yeah. Uh, NWO, yeah, NWO. Yeah. That was an interesting uh, line. Now, for a long period of time, I thought the WWF was in on that, and come to find out, they really was. No, no, they wasn't. They wasn't. It's, you know, just like with anything, it's competition. You know, I remember, man. You know, back you bringing up these thoughts and memories, man. I'm doing a yard sale. You know, me, me and the family. You know, we doing a yard sale. You know, the community I live in. You know, we do a pretty big community yard sale. So I'm out there one day, you know, uh, my son selling some of his old, you know, action figures. And uh, this guy came up and said, you know a thing about wrestling? I said, yeah, a little bit. So he asked me, uh, do you know this guy named Cyclone? He kept saying Cyclone. Cyclone? He kept saying Cyclone. He wouldn't say the lab word. Guess what it was, the lab name? What? Negro. He what? wouldn't say it because, you know, I'm going to slap the living mess out of him. Who was he talking about? Cyclone Negro. Okay. There was a roster named Cyclone Negro. 
Oh, oh, oh. I'm going to give y'all another one. Fans, y'all don't forget about Bobo Brazil. I remember Bobo Brazil. Do you remember about that Texas tornado? Oh, my goodness. Who was that? Uh, shit, I don't know his name. That one, Carrie Marty? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah that one, he tried to put the mask on. When he, <laughs> yeah. Oh, come and on. And that's when goodness. everybody thought he was the ultimate warrior, right. which he, he wasn't. Oh, my goodness. That, not him. Yeah, he was a monster. On Roy. But he I was a it. monster. Family member, hey, family member, don't come get him in, Bob. But, you know, uh, that he was on something. For his muscles to be like that, veined out. And that, that press slam, now that was a finishing move. That was a pretty good finishing move. Yeah, but if you was in a darn bar fight with him, man, he couldn't bust up great. <laughs> he had no win. Because he's going to be running around the box. Yeah, <laughs> right, 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 right around the box. <laughs> Beating his chin like a darn monkey in there. <laughs> uh, that was pretty crazy. I, I, but I did like the ultimate war. He, he was one of them high-energy guys. Now, the match went on too long. That was it. But you know, one of my all-time favorite rappers, all-time favorite is The Undertaker. That whole, from the grade, that, that played really well. I the motorcycle. Did, I didn't like that. I didn't like when he did that with the motorcycle, came this crazy biker. Didn't really, I didn't really care for that. I like more of when he had Paul Barry, he had the urn. He had the whole persona, he took the hat off, raised his hands, and lights come on in the, in the, in the stadium. So you said that one of the biggest gimmicks you don't seen in wrestling. That was one of the better gimmicks. Um, you know, I think the biggest gimmick I think in wrestling all time is probably the nerve, the nerve NWO. That was a pretty good gimmick. I, I, I will say that. And I like, well, no, no, Generation X. I think that was yeah, a better but gimmick. Yeah, copycat. Yeah, yeah, but they had a much better impact because that's when they brought in China and she became the first woman to wrestle a man and win a belt. Now, granted, of course, all of this is for ratings. Hey, I'm, hey, hey, I'm going to tell you this. Yeah. We don't put our hands on no woman, mm -hmm. but I would tell you this. Yeah. There ain't no woman going to come in and power slam me. <laughs> She put you in that sleeper hole. Let me tell you something. I be in the gym too, just like they be in the gym. You know, uh, uh, cause they gonna tug and say, what in the hell, I done got myself in the She was really strong. Jack. She was really strong. I don't think she would have power slammed me. Cause I would have reversed it. <laughs> man, you know, uh, man, 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 you brought up a topic about a bar fight. Man, I remember one time, man, I belly to belly somebody in the bar fight. <laughs> what the? Belly to belly. First of all, what you doing in the bar fight? What? Let, let's, get, let's get back there. What you doing in the bar fight? Some of the guys I used to be around, mm -hmm. I was there for some. Man, let me tell you something. Stein Brenner, you showed, Scott Stein, you showed me how to do that belly to belly. And I should throw them too. Mm -hmm. I just slam. Mm -hmm. The belly the belly. It works for real. Yeah. There ain't nobody coming up off my belly the belly coming back. But the problem is if they do, well they're gonna get another one. <laughs> Two belly the belly. Two belly the belly. I'm gonna tell you this, you know this is one of the most underrated, but I think if he would have still been living, he probably would have went down as one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. That's Eddie Guerrero. Mm, I think Chris Benoit. See, see the thing that Chris Benoit see because him and Eddie Guerrero had so many great matches because they knew yeah. how to wrestle. They actually was technicians. Yes. Uh, yeah. Now, granted, you know both of them, their past, and for the most part, you know, wrestling historians have removed them from, you know, from the from the books, from their legacy. But the problem is, is that those guys were really, really good wrestlers. They was technically sound, um, and you know, they both had a finishing move that was off the top. I mean, it was a high risk, high reward, uh, but technically sound, man, those guys was all the, remember they were wrestling and they have all those reversals, the reversals, the reversals, you can't beat that. I mean, that was great wrestling. Right None of that no more, but uh, you know, we, you know, the one thing I will say, you know, uh, 
this is one of the things we do in the Cigar Lounge on a daily basis. Just come up with different topics. You know, we may have a gentleman come in from Indiana. We may have a gentleman come in from Miami. We, we, we may have one come from Cali. But the one thing we have in common is this darn cigar. And uh, and our great topics are always, are always for a comment. Oh yeah. You know, and the one thing I'm gonna tell y'all, this is one thing we say in our clothes. Stay cool. Stay yeah. And what we